monday.com tips and tricks hey guys in this video i'm going to be showing you some tips and tricks that i have learned along the way of using monday.com so let's get into it now first off i'm here on my main workspace on monday.com but to make this tutorial a bit easier for you to understand what i am going to do is i'm just going to click on add workspace and i'm going to start with a new workspace and this is going to be totally separate from the rest of my work. And it's very easy to set up your account on monday.com. All you need to do is enter your email and verify it from your email account. And that's it. You're going to get started on monday.com and you're going to start with a empty workspace like this. Now, first off in your workspace, the workspace is a separate area. So if you click on my workspaces over here, so I have management and I have all these different workspaces and main workspace is my default workspace. Now, all of the work within these workspaces is going to remain separate and I cannot cross section or integrate works uh, that are present within different of these workspaces together. So that is something to keep in mind when you're creating a new workspace. That's the first tip if you're running a large company and you have a IT division and then you have a marketing division, you might wonder that, oh, I'll make a separate workspace for the IT people and a separate workspace for the uh, marketing people. But then if anyone has to communicate in between, they won't be able to share data and information and that can be quite a hassle and that could reduce the uh, workflow efficiency by a lot. So make sure that if, if it's a singular business and people might in some situations have to interact, opt for having a singular workspace and what you're going to do is within this new workspace so let's just say this is mary's um, production house so if i have a it and a marketing division what i am actually going to do is i'm going to click on add i'm going to add a new board and i'm going to name this one it i'm going to create this board and then i'm going to add a different board and i'm going to name it marketing marketing team and i'm going to create this board and in this way, you can see, although this is a singular workspace, the work for IT departments and the marketing department is separated and it's going to be easier to navigate through. Now, within your separate board, you can add many different views, timelines and all of that stuff. And the good thing about this is that you can view all of this on a singular calendar as well. So after that, there are a few things that you need to know. First off, you have your groups. Now, groups are something that are pretty easy and simple to understand. It's a group of items. So if it's IT, maybe it is um, pending. So pending is usually a status, but you can also add it as a group. But you could say if you're working on a goal and efficiency based formula, then you want a week uh, or monthly status update. So let's say it's currently October. So October week two. And then you can add your little tasks within these uh, different groups. So October week three. So this helps you keep your goals organized in a timely fashion. And the accomplishment of goals becomes a lot more easier if you're doing it this way. After that, you add your tasks. Then you have a start conversation buttons, your person buttons and your status. Now, within your status, what I would suggest to do as a tip, and I have done this often in my own workspaces, is that I like to add a column and I like to add a status column. And what I like to do is I like to rename this into recurring or, or I would like to name it time or anything some something along those lines so i like to name it recurring and then what i like to do is i like to add my own labels on this status bar i remove the previous labels and then i add my own so first off i have if this is recurring so if this is a recurring task if it is daily monthly weekly bi-weekly i'm going to add a color to this one bi-weekly then I like to add this. So after that, if I have maybe brief um, community briefing or IT team brief and like so. So this is the first task for the second week of October. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add this as a monthly recurring task. And this helps me categorize tasks more easily. And once I have a certain label on a task, what I can easily do is I can add this label to certain tasks. And when I want to view only recurring monthly tasks, I just view tasks that have this label and I don't have to work through all of the maybe even hundreds of tasks that you might have running a larger business. 
After that, you have your notifications, and I find these very helpful in terms of automation because you can easily notify people with automations here on Monday. So what, how you do that is if, let's say, we have the ID team brief, and you can click on automate over here. This is going to open up your automation center and the automation center here on monday.com is fantastic. I find it to be so useful and it's pretty great to uh, generally just work through this automation center. I have used many other workflow management softwares and monday.com just does automations the best. So if you can see, there are categories on your left and you can add automations as required. A good automation that I love to add is usually if you're a manager or someone in a management position or a supervisor, you can add a notification for whenever tasks are completed or whenever statuses are changed, you can be notified. And I find this very helpful because I don't have to open up monday.com constantly, but still I get notified whenever anything important happens. And you will get notifications on your application if you have it downloaded, or you can even add email notifications. So how you do that is, let's just say when a status changes to something if you click on automation over here so you can see over here that this is a automation called when a status changes to something notify someone and this is one of the most useful automations that i use it's very easy you're just going to click on add to board and then you're going to add a status so whenever the status changes to maybe completed or um, incomplete stuck any of these statuses that you have added you can be easily notified there are many other automations on monday.com and you can really uh, customize and tailor it to your personal liking and have your workflow managed in a very efficient manner now after that you also have filters so you can filter things by subscriptions dashboards shareable private and main so you can add different boards that are privated within a singular workspace so if i click on this and i click on new dashboard and dashboards are a feature that i usually like to use when i am giving a summary or a brief to someone else so let's just say managers dashboard and what i'm going to do after that is i'm going to make this a private dashboard I'm going to create this dashboard and I'm going to only share it with the manager. That's it. I don't want anyone else peeking within this little dashboard and you can choose your different board. So within your dashboard, you're going to get analytics for all of the different boards. For example, we created this IT board and this marketing team board, and I'm going to select both of these so the manager can view all of the progress that is being made on this specific board. I'm going to click on done. And then I can choose a few widgets to add. And this is a very useful feature if you are doing um, work for someone else. If you're an independent contractor, then you can just add a dashboard without having people, you know, poking within your work. You're just easily going to be able to give them briefs on your work without interference within the work itself. Now, after that, you have a my work section over here at monday.com. You just click over here and you can see everything that is scheduled to you and you can see i have this uh recurring item called waking up and it's just been assigned to me and you can see it has been um it's a recurring task so it shows up every time even though i've never moved it to complete it it still shows up you can see on the top you all also have your overdue today this week next week and later items you can easily do your own work without having to open up workspaces on monday and if you're working solo it's going to be a lot easier to just work on the my work section and then just open up the works the, the entire workspace whenever you're free and have extra time now, after that, you have apps and integrations on monday.com. And depending on the industry you're working in, it's going to be very helpful. But if you're not very familiar with app integrations, then you need to be a bit careful when adding integrations. Because if you add maybe productivity and efficiency um, integrations and you really don't know how to use them, it's going to be more of a hassle to set them up rather than a tool that is going to accentuate your workflow and accentuate the time management aspect of your work. Generally, you want to add basic integrations. So integrations like your Google Drive, your Gmail, your type forms. So type forms are a very good integration to add. Let me add that because this is going to form a customized form for your boards and start collecting data, which you, you might have to make a individual form yourself. It might cost you money or it might take you a lot of time to make certain type forms. Now, after that on Monday, 
if you click on your own individual settings over here, you can see your own profile data and all of that stuff. And then you can also change the theme of your own workspace. So if you want to work in dark mode and night mode, which I often do, you can definitely change that according to the time of day it is. So it doesn't strain your eyes and working constantly on the softwares and on your screen can be a very taxing job. So make sure that you use these features to the maximum that you can. Now we have discussed some of the basic tips you need to know to get started on Monday. Now I'm going to discuss with you some of the price plans on Monday. First off, you have the free version, which includes unlimited boards, docs, and 200 templates, and over 20 column types. You also get two team members. So the limitation on the free version is that you have only two team members. I suggest to most people to either go for the pro version, because I find that $16 per member per month is a bit pricey as compared to other software managers. But Monday.com is not only a project manager, but it is a workflow manager. So each person is going to be working so much better on monday.com. You get private boards, docs, chart views, time tracking, formula columns, automations, integrations, and you can create a dashboard that combines up to 10 boards. So as I showed you guys over here in my workspace, if I click on add and create a new dashboard, and let's just say I'm adding a CEO dashboard. So let's just call it CEO's dashboard. And then I make it private, I create this dashboard. And for the CEO, the CEO is not managing just the IT team, marketing team. He wants to know about everything. And you can just add all of these different boards to a singular dashboard and he can get all the data he needs without having to you know, work and browse through different dashboards or browse through, through that. Because at that level, you won't have that much time to brief them about each individual team. So that's just a general overview of their price plans. I hope you guys found this video helpful and you're now able to easily work on monday.com with these simple tips and tricks. And you're now able to choose the best plan for you on monday.com. I will catch you guys in the next video.